What's going on, nerds of wrestling, and welcome to today's episode of What's Up Wrestler, a podcast by Nerds of Wrestling. It is Friday evening, and I hope you all are doing extremely well. My guest at this very time is the Diamond Queen, Evelyn Carter. Evelyn, what is going on? How are you today? I am excellent. Thank you for asking. Of course, of course. Uh, like we, I said in the start before the start of the show, rocking those headphones. I love them very much. Like you said, yeah. As I should be very jealous because I am. I am actually. I might have to go get a pair of those headphones now. Yes, as you should. I, I should. I should. Uh, how are you doing today? Uh, how are you doing during this crazy pandemic we're kind of living in? You know, just staying busy. You know, Queen's Day usual workload is very intense, but I don't typically complain. So. Uh, well, there you go. It seems like you have everything handled uh, pretty well. I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> How have you been like using this time watching Netflix, watching wrestling? What have you been up to, like keeping keeping busy? What's Netflix? Is is that a poor people thing? Uh, I think so. Okay. Um, well, anyway. Um, <laughs> well, I've been very busy. Obviously, like I am the sore women's champion, so I was defending that until. I unfortunately got injured, but you know, a job, my job is never done. So I have a lot of things brewing in the back that not a lot of people know about. Well, I'm pretty sure everyone is excited to see everything uh, once it comes to life. Uh, Tell us more about the Diamond Queen. How did the Diamond Queen become the Diamond Queen? Well, originally I was the lovely Evelyn Carter because obviously I'm very lovely. Well, obviously. (laughs) Obviously. And the title of Diamond Queen was actually bestowed upon me by none other than Dante Smiley during our Royal Rumble into the Fatal 4-Way match. He was very impressed by my performance that evening at Sora Championship Wrestling, so much so that he decided to extend an invitation for me into the Chaotic Kingdom. And what better way to do so than by dubbing me the Diamond Queen? Of course. And I absolutely love that. Uh, it seems like the Diamond Queen is a uh, a very high class, prestige kind of wrestler that nobody wants to really fuck with. Yes, she is very much so. <laughs> I mean, if you've seen every any of my matches, like you would see, the end result is typically very bad for my opponents. I've seen a few of your matches. Before we talk about those, um, drop those plugs. Where can the nerds find you? They can find me on Instagram at the underscore Evelyn underscore Carter, Twitter, the Evelyn Carter, and you can even find me on Facebook if you're so lucky. If you're so lucky, don't worry, nerds. We will get those plugs again at the end. Uh, Talk about some of your matches that you've wrestled in. What are some of your favorite matches? Tell us about a little bit about your training as well. I have wrestled just a wide variety of women and occasionally train against men because I find that I'm not as challenged when it comes to women wrestling. But anyway, I digress. So I have wrestled women from the American witch, Erica Torres. I don't know if you've heard of her, but she's pretty nasty when it comes to Oklahoma wrestling. Like that, that's, ugh, She's scary. She's very scary. I've wrestled her. I've wrestled Miranda Gordy, that nasty little free bird. You know, second generation wrestler. Who? Oh, big deal. Okay. Um, Danny B. I will say, there. Are, uh, like I said, I wrestled a lot of women. There have only been two women that have impressed me so far, and I've wrestled them multiple times. So I can say this with confidence: that would be Danny B. and Maddie Runkowski. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I've gotten my hands on both of them. I- I've whooped them. You know, of course. And but they did not go down without a fight, you know. Maddie, one thing that one thing that's very hard for me is that you know I'm a very big woman. I'm I'm very tall and very muscular, and so when I try to find someone that's as physically intimidating like me, it's very difficult with women. But Maddie, you know, she's up there in height, not so much muscle. She's a little skinny, but (laughs) she she oh okay, she can um she can hit yeah. She can definitely hit, but you know, I hit harder, so it's whatever. Whereas Danny, Danny's a tiny little thing. She's so tiny, but uh she's very fast. She's very fast. So that that you know, whenever I wrestle her, I have to make sure to keep up with that, which is actually very annoying. I get very dizzy. Mm. <laughs> anyway. 
But favorite match to date? Favorite match to date, it doesn't involve either of them. It actually involves Amber Rodriguez when I won the SOAR women's title. Of off course. Of, her. of course, that was my favorite match to date. For my training, my training is, well, training was very intense. I would, I rest, I trained with wrestling with none other than the Bumps and Bruises Pro Wrestling Academy. I would go up there two times a week. <laughs> for like two hours at a time. It would sometimes go three. Sometimes they'll stay later till four. You know, it was always very intense. We would occasionally work out on the weekends for show days, which was also, you know, also very intense. And aside from that, I, of course, I'm like I've said, I'm very fit. And so I would go to the gym like six days a week, just pumping that good old iron. Of course, pump that iron. I love that. Of course. Stepping into the ring for the very first time uh, in, uh, in the start of your training, what was that like? What was going through your mind? I, were you nervous? Were you excited? I don't get nervous. Oh. I get excited. There you go. <laughs> I was not at all nervous. My very first match. So it was weird. My very first match <laughs> was in October of 2019. And wow. then I, I didn't wrestle again until January 2020. So it was a very last, it was a very last minute thing. Um, the woman that was supposed to come in and wrestle, you know, she couldn't make it in. And so they're like, oh, Evelyn, we need your grace. And I'm like, I know you need my grace. Like, shut the fuck up. And so I showed up last minute and I was like, okay, who am I going to whoop today? And like I said, I was not at all nervous. I remember everything about that show I was there with my once partner, Carlton Easley. He currently is not wrestling at the moment, but he will be back. And it was very nice sharing that opportunity with him. And just, it, w it was hilarious. He likes to regale me with the story of my first wrestling match. And he'll always say, oh, gosh, Evelyn, I was just so nervous for you, but you were just standing there all gracious and you were just so excited to get out there and kick Erica Torres's ass. And I was just like, I know, like, sorry, I don't know. I, I don't understand why people get nervous. I really don't. You know what you're doing, and if you're good at it, there's no re reason to get nervous, so. <laughs> well, I mean, that is, that is very true. Uh, who were some of your favorite wrestlers growing up, watching, you know, the industry, WWE, New Japan, ROH, or even Impact? Favorite wrestler to date, someone who I, someone who I looked up, there were two people, Someone I look up to and someone I I was inspired by or motivated by. And I looked up to Victoria. Or, or no, it was two women I looked up to. I looked up to Victoria and China because they kind of they kind of broke this mold with wrestling for women that you can be big and strong and not look like a dumpster fire. <laughs> Just saying. Fair enough. And, you know, not bashing women. I am a strong feminist, you know, hoorah, hoorah, whatever. But just the fact that they opened that door for when – who is interrupting my podcast right now? Hello? Seriously. <laughs> the fact that they just opened that door for powerful women to step through and really put on a show and put on a performance and put on in this athletic power – showing that women's matches are not water break matches, which is really, in, really inspiring for me as a kid and really inspiring for me whenever I really got into wrestling. Now, as far as a wrestler that is like motivates me to upscale classiness and all the money and everything that I have, I would have to say that who motivates me is Ric Flair. Of course, Ric Flair. He's he's a goat. He's one of the greatest. He's the greatest of all time. Uh, yes. You, you said China and Victoria were two of your favorite women wrestlers. Uh, I remember uh, at the time in like '06, Victoria was dominating everybody, and like you said, those type of matches that Victoria was in, or even China back in the day, those are the matches people were excited for because I'm pretty sure you recall like Victoria was whooping everybody's ass and everybody was tuning in. Every single week, like, oh, who's Victoria going to beat next? Who is she going to beat next? Uh, what are some matches from Victoria that you remember, like, vividly? <laughs> the main one I remember the most 
is good lord i can't even remember who the two women she was wrestling at the time but it was during a three-way match and it involved i think it was like one of those um what's the matches where they have like the ladders and the trash cans and all that nasty stuff like a hardcore street yeah. fight it's something like that it was like a street fight. i'm just gonna call it a street fight she had a street go. fight with two other women and the reason why i liked that match the most is because in that match i want to say it was like about halfway through that match she literally got injured she tore her acl and then she finished the performance she finished the match she kicked their ass with a torn acl like are you serious that was that was great i really love that one <laughs> That is, I I don't I don't recall that. I gotta I gotta go back and watch that. If uh, you remember the year, I would definitely go check that out. Uh, you said China was another one of your favorite women wrestlers. I gotta ask, what are some matches that you recall from her? God, the main just the main thing that just sticks out with me with China is how she just she fought everyone, right? And her time with Triple H. They were just like such this powerful force and it was like really awe inspiring just like watching them together, but more so with her separate, how she could just literally whoop anyone's ass. She could strike fear into the hearts of anyone, whether it was a man or a woman. And that's what I like the most about her because <laughs> I, I love every match China did, but it was just the fact that she could be that much of a domineering presence is what really got to me. So that's why I can't really place my finger on a favorite with her because I just liked the whole attitude and everything she brought to the table for all of her matches. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Now here's another tough question. Same thing. I actually, the uh, other two, I feel like you know where this is going. Ric Flair. What's your favorite Ric Flair match? Oh yeah, no, there's no favorite Ric Flair match. When I say I was inspired and motivated by, by Ric Flair, I didn't mean his wrestling. I meant just the sheer fact that he was rich and how he held himself to higher society standards. <laughs> That's what I meant. No. Oh, my, po sorry, nerds. Sorry, you're not going to get anything out of that from um Evelyn. I, I want to go back to your wrestling a little bit. You said you wrestled uh, Maddie Rankowski a few times, Danny B. I know you had a tag team match with uh, Vert Vixen. A lot of these girls who are now, you know, kind of doing their thing on AEW Dark. Uh, another person I want to talk to you about was um, Amber Rodriguez. You wrestled Amber Rodriguez and you, you won the title. What was that like? And what was going through your mind when after that match or during the match? During the match, I just, it was, um, I, leading up to that night, I knew that night was coming. It was inevitable. I knew we were going to bump heads eventually because she was the current champion and I was a rising star. But there's nothing you can, good Lord, could they be any louder? <laughs> there's nothing I could say or do that was going to mentally prepare me for that moment. The only thing I kept having to tell myself was to just go in there and just completely destroy her because she's one of those women. That's actually like my, that's my size as well. And so it's like, okay, this isn't going to be, you know, this isn't going to be like a cakewalk for me. It's going to be a decent fight. It was a lot harder than I anticipated, honestly, but I still came out as a champion. But during that time fighting her, I just kept thinking, I need that belt. I don't want it. I need it. I need to make my point that I am the rightful sword women's champion. And that's what I was holding on to. That's what I was holding on to when she had me in her submission hold and she was breaking my back. That's what I was holding on to when she was screeching to the top of her lungs and trying to rupture my eardrums. I was literally holding on to that idea of just having that belt adorn my waist. And that's what ultimately got me through that night. Afterwards, it was all pretty much a blur. Of course, everyone was thanking me, blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> the f after that match, having that championship belt in my hand, knowing that I did it, that I finally proved to everyone that I'm not just a pretty face. That was the best moment for me by far. 
That's incredible. That was for the store room is championship. I, I had to ask. I, I feel like I should know this. Uh, where are you located? Uh, uh, um, what promotions do you wrestle for? Like mostly. Uh, it's just sore championship wrestling. It's the entirety of the OIWA. We have promotions. We have SOAR. We have CKW. We have SEW. We have a bunch of promotions under this one umbrella. So I only wrestle for them because why would I go anywhere else? They treat me so well. So <laughs> I see. I was going to ask, like, you named all those promotions, and there's so many other promotions out there. Uh, do you see yourself working anywhere else outside, you know, maybe, like, different different states? I have worked in different states, and... They have been very lackluster, so <laughs> probably not. I will say, I don't see myself leaving sore anytime soon, although I will probably have to give up the belt eventually since I can't wrestle for a year, whatever. I don't see myself leaving sore anytime soon because I like to get on the train before it's even on the tracks. And sore Championship Wrestling in the OIWA they are going full steam ahead, and I see where this is going to go for them. And so why would I be one of those losers who only wants to get credit once it's there, whereas I want to be the amazing individual who was there the entire time to show my support, even though, you know, Sermo gets on my nerves and he doesn't have a thought in that pretty little head sometimes. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here, to keep him in check and to make sure that, you know, he doesn't lose his mind. Right, of course. You know, we all got to have those type of people in our lives. You know, I'm pretty sure I have tons of people who I got to make sure, you know, all right, I'm just there to keep them in check, and that's it. Uh, exactly. I mean, we all have, I mean, that's, that's what friends are for, though. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all friends. I wouldn't say I'm his friend. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, now, watch yourself. I'm not his friend, okay? My bad. I'm sorry. I don't think he has a lot of friends. It's not for lack of trying, okay? It's just he goes against his word so many times, so he burns so many bridges. Right. Damn. Like, well, shit. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna say that word again. Uh, what are your goals uh, after this whole pandemic is over? What do you really want to uh, accomplish? My main goal when it comes to wrestling is to prove to every. I let me paint you a picture. I don't have a dream of holding a specific title. I don't have a dream of going somewhere specific. My dream is for people, and I say dream with full intentions of making this true. My dream with wrestling is for people to see my name, see my picture, know my face, and say, man, Evelyn Carter, that is a great wrestler. Not great women's wrestler, but just great wrestler overall. Because I solemnly aim to prove that I can whoop anyone's butt, whether it is a woman or a man. And that is what I plan to do whenever I get all healed up and I am back on it. If you don't mind talking about, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what what happened? Uh, how did you get injured, if you don't mind me asking? I don't mind at all. It was just a training incident. Like I said, I train like crazy. I just pushed my body too far and it couldn't take it. And so I tore my ACL during oh. practice one evening, um, like tore my meniscus, displaced tibia, like a bunch of other little things. But um, that happened the first week in February. And then I had surgery just three weeks ago. So I have about, I have until... Like, I'm giving myself a goal to be, like, great, perfect, flawless by January. I'm rooting for you. I know everyone is rooting for you. I wish you nothing but the best of luck in your career in wrestling. I hope to see you at a show sometime. Uh, Evelyn, I just want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. This was a lot of fun. I hope to have you on again in the near future. Well, I don't know what's stopping you from seeing me at a show. Just because I walk with a cane doesn't mean I'm not at the sore wrestling shows. I'm literally, <laughs> except for this weekend, I am literally at every show. You would well, know that if you came to one. I'm from Connecticut, so. Okay, and? So? Uh, yeah. So? Okay, I'll take I'll take a train. There you go. I'll take a okay, train there. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, drop those plugs one more time. Where can the nerds find you? 
I appreciate you for dropping the plugs. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter, obviously right there. I'm not going to repeat it because I did earlier. And then you can also find me on Facebook. There you go. Uh, nerds, this has been an episode of What's Up Wrestler, a podcast by Nerds of Wrestling. I'm your host, Justin Del Rio. Peace out, nerds.